Next up, I have on the schedule Don Knuth. I'm not sure if he has seen the schedule. Um, earlier, he told me he wanted to go last. But Don, if you were ready, um, I've, I've allocated 10 minutes for you. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, all right. Um, well, I, I, the reason I wanted to be last was so, was so that I could uh, listen to what everybody else had, had said so that I wouldn't duplicate any of it and I would try to fill in uh, uh, things that I uh, that I hadn't heard so far and uh, uh, and of course uh, John covered so many bases that uh, uh, I, I still have a lot of things that I have that I didn't hear that so, so, so I'm going to try to get I'm going to try to get through um, but the uh, but I, I guess I Mainly, I, I, I got to say, so overall, there's this, uh, uh, well, superlatives fail me. Uh, the best way I can, I can describe John's significance to me personally is that, uh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> words are failing me, but uh, when... <clears throat> oh, okay. He's my second favorite mathematician of all time. So, what do I mean by this? You know, when I think of all the mathematics that I've ever heard about, and and then I say, which mathematics do I love the most? And then I say, where did that mathematics come from? Okay, the the mathematician who did most of the of the mathematics I love the most was, was Leonard Euler. But but after that, I put John Conway as having contributed so many other kind of mathematics that I love very deeply. Uh, and, you know, I have to put them, I have to put them, you know, Gauss was, was in there somewhere too, but, but, but I, 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 I put John as second only to Euler. Um, now, uh, and this is with respect to the things that really warm my heart, the, 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 you know, the parts of mathematics that it, 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 everybody has their favorite uh, like composer, their favorite poet, their favorite novelist, their favorite puzzle maker, you, you know, their favorite algorithm, whatever it is. Um, and and there, there are some things that when you see them every time, uh, you think this is, uh, uh, this is really special to me. And, and John was that way with me for so many things. Now, uh, I, uh, people t said, when did they first meet him? Um, Oh, before before that, I have to mention that uh, we're almost exactly the same age. It, it turns out that he was just he, he was just two weeks and one day uh, older than me. So so that means uh, 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 tomorrow I'm going to be just as long, just as old as he was when he died. And and, and I now know that I was born on a Monday. Um, and uh, and and we first uh, we first met uh, in. in uh, in Oxford in 1967, I think it was at a, at a conference. I've got this uh, this book for uh, for, for the uh, uh, I guess it comes up in mirror image. <laughs> anyway, uh, th there was a conference uh, where he spoke about knot theory, and uh, and I remember that he uh, that he he would demonstrate. Uh, he he had he had some kind of beads that he could he could put together uh, or not. And he could make all kinds of different knots and, and, and he put them together in the middle of the uh, lecture hall and every you know it was a fantastic uh, fantastic lecture. Uh, it turned out that that the uh, that the stuff he was talking about in knot theory was a revolutionary new, new notation that he had actually invented as an undergraduate uh, uh, in uh, 1958. So, so um, um, well, I spoke at that time about something that became known as the Knuth Bendix algorithm, uh, and uh, and and according to my my letter file, I I, I wrote to him a, a, about some topics in computer science. In 1970, I, uh, I I was asking him questions about regular expressions. Uh, I, uh, John wrote this this incredible book about re regular expressions. I, how do, hardly anybody remembers it now. I, I, I bet you there's, uh, uh, you know, there's there's lots of material there that's that that people are are, are going to discover 10, 20 years from now. And 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 and, and uh, you know, it was, it was written way before its time. 
and regular expressions is one of the one of the key things in computer science. But uh, but but people didn't know know that that John uh, actually spent a lot of time on it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, very significantly, 1972, I, I, I met John on a trip to Calgary. Uh, it was 24th of February, 1972, and and uh, we had lunch together. And he and he he had just come up with uh, uh, his his amazing uh, uh, theory of numbers and games. And he showed me, uh, he, and he wrote out the, the the numbers part of it on a napkin. And the napkin was about so big, and uh, and and uh, uh, he, he drew all the theorems on there, and then we put a box around them. Then we then we get to the next step, and so on. And it was the most fascinating thing I ever saw. I kept that napkin uh, with me for, uh, for for a long time, but unfortunately, I've lost it. I have no idea what. Maybe it'll turn up someday, <laughs> somewhere. Um, and and uh, that was night. As I say, February of seventy two uh, on. Uh, uh, on May '72, he came. He, he came here to my house. Uh, I was having a weekly seminar on combinatorics, and and uh, when, when people would come into the seminar, they they all had to sign the, uh, our, our guest book. And so here's. Uh, I hope you can see it. This is the. You can turn the speaker view. Anyway, this is May eighth. Not. Uh, 1972, where John was the speaker, and, and, and his topic was puzzles and games. And uh, uh, I, I, I looked through the, the the list of all the uh, of all the people who signed in. I uh, went on uh, to the next page, but I I don't think any of the any of you were uh, in this in this list. Uh, not even Scott Kim, but uh, but. Uh, uh, so many, you know, interesting names like Richard Stanley and so on. Uh, then, um, December of 1972, uh, I woke up in the morning, or I couldn't sleep at four o'clock in the morning. I and I decided to write this book called Surreal Numbers. The whole, the whole, whole thing came to me, uh, you know, a, a creation story, but but instead of of, of Yaveb doing the creation, it's J.H.W.H. Conway doing the creation. Well, well uh, okay, I told you I, I, I talked too much about this, but but I, after six days, uh, I finished it, and on the seventh day, I rested. And uh, on the seventh day, uh, I, I wanted to write a letter to my secretary telling her how to type the book. And I couldn't compose a sentence at all. I I, I would start a sentence and I and, and I was saying, what was I going to say? And 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 so after after six days of, of you know everything flowing, uh, suddenly I can't write a letter to, to my secretary. Uh, th th then we send a copy of the thing to John, and and uh, he noticed that I gotten I I gotten uh, the axioms are wrong. I I hadn't remembered them correctly. Uh, there, there's a difference between less than or equal. And not greater than, and, and I had chosen the wrong way, um, and and so uh, 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 he, and he showed me. I visited him at, at Easter time that that year, seventy three, and uh, and uh, we and he showed me the, the the book he was numbers and games that he was that he was writing, and he and he introduced me to Simon Norton, who was who was uh, doing all kinds of uh, amazing things with surreal numbers and. And uh, so, anyway, uh, uh, I went back in the summer to to a to a, uh, a a little. Um, uh, uh, it's called Sulheim, and uh, it, this was in in the uh, remote uh, valley of Norway where nobody spoke English. And I and I, and I rewrote the book six more days uh, using the correct accents, uh, and and it came out better that way. I, I, the, the theorems were weren't as difficult to uh, to derive as I had had before before, uh, and and so on. But it, the, the whole thing uh, uh, um, mainly uh, it, it seemed to be a, a, one of these once in a lifetime inspirations that uh, that was uh, that was another out of body experience. <clears throat> well, people have been talking about surreal numbers a lot, though. So I want to talk about other stuff. Um, uh, I, I remember when John came to my house. Uh, uh, he he saw the uh, 
uh, uh, the house number. I live on on, on 1063, and and I said, well, and so immediately, so, oh, 1063, uh, that's that's two to the tenth plus two to the fifth plus two squared plus two to the one plus two to the zero. So this is the exponents are ten five two one zero, and, and you know he, he came up with this immediately, and, and then he said something about, oh, and that and and that's the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the order of uh, the, uh, the uh, Zulu subgroup of something or other, and, but then he said, "No, nope, I'm sorry, I'm wrong." Uh, and and, and uh, it, it's amazing how his mind thought because, in in, in fact, there are rather similar formulas for Zulu subgroups, but uh, uh, but but this wasn't quite right. Uh, okay, now. Um, uh, now, in uh, 1975, I was giving lectures in, in, in Montreal, and again, I met John. Uh, uh, this was kind of a fateful meeting in Canada, um, and, uh, and and I was giving I was giving a series of of, of seven lectures about the topic of uh, stable matching. This is where you have you have boys and girls and. And uh, the boys, each boy ranks all the girls, each girl ranks all the boys, and then there's a, there are ways to pair them up that are, that are called stable. And a beautiful theory uh, associated with that, and that was what I'm, I was lecturing about. And uh, and uh, on, uh, and I just given my second my, my second lecture, and 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 John came, uh, and. Uh, and and I worked out something uh, that in my diary says. Uh, uh, Called a cycle theorem that I didn't know about, but anyway, on um, on that night, John and Wendy Mackay had a party, and and John Connolly was there, and and so I told him about my cycle theorem, and and, and he, he and he, he thought about it for a few minutes, and, and he, he he completely, totally generalized it and came up with a beautiful a, a beautiful fundamental theory that goes in, into the theory of stable matchings. Uh, it says something like this: If if you take any two stable matchings, uh, uh, where you know we got boys matched to girls, and and then uh, uh, if if if, if uh, each boy looks at at the at the girls he has in the two ones and and, and chooses the better uh, of those two independently of each other, uh, then you get another stable matching, and and similarly the, it, the girls could do the same thing. And and this means that the uh, set of all stable matching forms a lattice, and and it, 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 it distributed lattice. It, it, it's an incredibly uh, interesting uh, uh, result. And he came up with this at, at, at this party while you know, you know while, while we were there. So so that was uh, that was November 1975. Well, um, one of the one of the incredibly wonderful. Pure mathematical theory. He, you know, I think he contributed every branch of mathematics, probably except cohomology. But uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, but but what, one of the uh, uh, really important ones is is his is his uh, 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 discovery of, of, of finite fields. Uh, uh, I, I I don't I think anyway. There's an infinite. Finite field. There, excuse me. I'm, I'm going to tell a little story here. It, 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 it's one of the. It's one of it, kind of a scandal in mathematics that 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 uh, that, that finite fields, uh, uh, you know, exist for for the, every power of every prime. But but the proof is non-constructive. Uh, you, 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 nobody knows how to construct a, 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 a finite field of order three to the. Uh, uh, 20th, uh, it's not hard to find one. Uh, you, you just try a few things and and and, uh, and pretty soon you hit what you hit when you find an irreducible polynomial. But nobody knows a way to construct irreducible polynomials for, for, for a prime and a power. Uh, 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 it's just something that that we can show it, it, it does exist. And and uh, it, but but there's one exception to that now, and that is John Conway found. Oh, an explicit construction uh, uh, using the other part of his his theory of games, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the kind where 
where they don't make numbers, but but all the games have value zero uh, are, 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 are sort of parallel to each other. This is the so so he has finite fields of order two to the fourth, two to the eighth, two to the sixteenth, two to the thirty-two, and so on. And and all of these finite fields uh, have have a particular constructive rule where you can write down exactly what is the rule for multiplication, and and is and. Uh, and, and they're all embedded uh, in the same superfield of you know, two to the two to the infinity, uh, and, and and this is one of the uh, I, I think you know uh, incredibly wonderful aspects of mathematics that he came up with. Now, um, uh, since since Peter Week since Peter Winkler spoke, I I wanted to mention. Uh, uh, something out of uh, out, out of Peter's book uh, on, on mathematical puzzles uh, uh, called uh, 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 Conway's napkin problem, and, uh, and 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 John was at this uh, at this dinner at Bell Labs, uh, where, and Peter uh, was there, and, and and there are these people sit, sitting at a circular table, and, and between every two seats is a napkin. Uh, you get to the table, and the first person that gets there gets to choose whether he wants the napkin on the left or the na or, 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 or the napkin on the right. And, 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 you know, another person comes in, and uh, and uh, so so uh, 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 John said, "Oh, here's a great problem. What's the probability that uh, that everybody gets a napkin? Because it, 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 uh, it, it, if everybody's left-handed, then they all get a napkin. But if, if some are left-handed, some are right-handed, there's a, a kind of a clash. And and so, uh, the, so it turned out that this is a really interesting problem where the uh, where you have two to the n times n factorial possibilities. You have n factorial orders in which the people could come in and 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 each each one can prefer left or right. And uh, and and uh, I learned about this uh, through through Peter Winkler's. Uh, Problem book, and then, and and then I uh, I, I I told uh, uh, several mathematicians uh, who, who wrote this paper uh, uh, about neat ways to generalize where you have probability p and uh, of being left-handed and so on. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I. Got to say quickly, in 1990, uh, several dozen of us were at a conference, and and, and we and we were in Burlington, Vermont, and uh, and and we went. Our excursion was to take a hike up, up Mount Mansfield, and uh, and so I spent that entire hike uh, you know, talking mathematics to John. But the, uh, the main thing I want to re uh, relate is that he didn't. He he went barefoot, and, and there was snow on the ground. I mean, so, uh, so that was our hike up, up Mount Mansfield. Um, when when John was uh, an undergraduate uh, already, he got interested in in this in this thing which he called the Quinn terminal dodecahedron. So, so uh, the, the idea is uh, if if you have five if you have a pentagon and you have numbers one two three four five, there's there are just twelve ways to uh, uh, to arrange them. Uh, 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 up to up to rotation and, and and reflection, and so he says, well, you've got just twelve ways to put to put these numbers on. Uh, maybe we can, you know, we we can make a dodecahedron so that that, that uh, everything will match up. Um, actually, this is this is this is uh, this is a puzzle by Nob. It's not it's not John's puzzle. Uh, this one has has vertex matching, not not edge matching, but. But I, I, I'm going to try to share my screen now and and, and show you. Uh, let's see how, if this works. Uh, oh, I want to I want to share everything. Uh, yeah, I, I think this does it. What? Can you see? Yes. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So here. And anyway, uh, uh, when John was an undergraduate. Uh, 1958, he uh, he came up with this with this problem and and uh, uh, let me zoom. Anyway, the, it, it turns out it's a well, it's a wonderful. Uh, how do I get this working here? I'm sorry, my. Uh, 
I'm not able to, to scroll down just a little bit here. Uh, so, um, when I put this in my book, uh, it turned out I, I just spent several days trying to figure figure out the answer, and it turned out there there are just three different ways. But the, but there's so many different symmetries of this thing, it, it's really difficult to uh, figure out when you've got a, a different solution uh, because it, you 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 write a computer programming and a computer program and you get 120 answers. Uh, uh, but, but then uh, a lot of those turn out to be equivalent. Well, it, uh, John did this all without the help of a computer. Now, um, th this that's part of um, th that's part of uh, uh, of uh, our computer programming volume f uh, of volume four, fascicle five, and 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 uh, of course in in fascicle six we have the game of life. Uh, uh, and, and some applications uh, uh, of the game of life, and uh, and since we have a, such a distinguished audience here, I can't resist uh, uh, telling you two of the problems that are in this book that uh, that I dearly like to know the answer to that 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 uh, um, are, are, you know that definitely stumped me as I was working on it, and 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 uh, uh, so I go to the next page and. Um, uh, here, uh, here we go. Um, maybe I can zoom in a little bit, but I, 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 I talk of what I call a, a mobile path, and a mobile path is something uh, that has the property that that it never dies out, um, but nothing stays alive more than four times, more than four consecutive cycles. So, so. so um, uh, you, you know, it, 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 it can be alive um, at time zero, one, two, and three, but then it has to be dead at time four. Uh, but it should keep going. And and I studied I studied all the mobile paths that 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 I could find on on a chessboard. So I have eight eight by eight, and and I insist that the, the total number of live cells be between six and ten. And and I, and this was quite quite fascinating to discover uh, to discover all these patterns. Uh, like this one ends up at a still life, so it's not going to be mobile at the next step. So in each case, uh, uh, if you get to R equal nine, uh, 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 it's not mobile anymore. Something happened uh, to break the rule. But but now the the question that I that I I, I tried very hard at, and I had self sets I was running on this uh, for for months, uh, and finally uh, I had to turn the machine off. Uh, is is there one of length uh, uh, twelve? Uh, I, I was able to get up to length 11, uh, but uh, but length but I couldn't prove that you can't get to length 12. So uh, uh, those of you who are are, are life hackers, uh, uh, you know, please help me with that one. And and the and then I have another uh, you know most wanted uh, life question on page uh, where is it um, uh, page. Uh, Let's try 147. Okay. 147. Okay. Um, okay. So here, I, here I have a table of all the. Uh, suppose that that we have an infinite uh, uh, life board, and and I insist that. Everything in in the upper right, uh, and, and upper left, and lower right are, it is is it is originally blank. But I'm allowed to put any configuration what, that I want in the lower left. Now, how long? What's the earliest time that I can get uh, that I can turn on one of the uh, cells up here? So so uh, it, it always takes me two steps at least to get to here. But you know, you know what? Only one step, of course, to get here, and and, and it takes me twenty steps to get uh, to go. From here, depending on what I want. Okay, now the uh, I I have a formula uh, uh, that that is a lower bound, uh, saying that you always need at least that many 
uh, that, that many steps. No matter what you put in the lower left corner, it's, yeah, you, you, you can't possibly get, get there fast. And, and the conjecture is that that, that lower bound is tight, that, that it, it always, there's always a way, some, some pattern that's always going to get you there in that minimum number of steps. And in exercise 84, I, you know, I, I, I solved infinitely many cases of the conjecture. However, there are still many more cases that, that are unknown, and, uh, and including, uh, I think, Knight's move patterns, uh, where, where I don't know if uh, are the fastest thing. Okay, now, um, I guess you didn't want me to talk so long, so I've got, I got to show you, uh, uh, I guess, one, well, okay, I have a list of, 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 of other things that I learned from him that I'll just run through it quickly so you get a sampling. The, uh, John and I talked about the, uh, the QD algorithm uh, and determinants. Uh, uh, he, uh, he has this wonderful uh, theorem about non-transitive coin tossing that was only published by Martin Gardner and, and then it appears in the book Concrete Mathematics. Uh, he had a, 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 a people mentioned his sliding block puzzles, his century puzzle. He, you know, he, he found a, a great, he loved this one. It took a hundred, hundred steps to, uh, to solve it. He had a 49 steps puzzle. Uh, Art of Computer Program talks about an idea that he had called animating functions. And we all, and also talk about the wonderful ideas he had on, on freeze patterns with Coxeter. Uh, now, in 1990s, uh, he, he, he showed me something else, which he called a trees pattern, T-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, trees patterns. And I wrote him a letter saying, John, this is, wonder this is great. Uh, I, I, have you published it anywhere? He never answered that letter. So I don't know. If, 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 so anyway, the, the trees patterns exist in my, in my file. Um, uh, but, but to conclude, since I've been taking a, a lot of time, let me show you. Um, something that I put on the web yesterday. Um, uh, uh, let's see, I go to, um, let me go to my homepage. Whoa, how do I, okay. So um, I, 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 wrote a, I wrote a little paper uh, dedicated to John uh, about a problem that I've been, been working on the last three weeks. In fact, it's, it's sort of been, it's sort of been consuming me, uh, but, uh, but it, it, if you go to preprints of recent papers and then you go down to the bottom where it says unpublications, uh, so I got these papers that that, that don't, don't ever go to cake. So, so this is what this was yesterday, um, and and I have uh, this this little this little note about sign skeletons and has to do with uh, with polyhedra. Uh, that that people were uh, mentioning that as being one of his interests, and and I, I and I think it's a question that would would have really fascinated him, and I and I and I've got uh, uh, partial results, and I was able to, uh, I, and I got five open problems at the end, uh, but 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 but, but let, let me give you the, uh, the main gist of it. I, I'm considering special kind of polyhedra where every vertex. It, uh, uh, it, it is uh, 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 it's surrounded by exactly three faces. You're not allowed to have four faces come together. But but with, with this uh, with this restriction, uh, 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 every edge is either convex or concave, and and and, and then you get a cube. You get a graph when you take the skeleton. Uh, it uh, uh, you, you just look at the vertices and the edges connecting them, and you get a graph in which every uh, you know it's a cubic graph. Every every uh, every vertex has three neighbors, and so we can draw this graph. And but we can but now we we say well this is a mountain fold or this is a valley fold. So 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 when I have a a, a dashed line, it means uh, uh, I I want it to be a, a concave uh, edge like that one. And so, the, so the question. So, so I looked through all of the uh, cubic graphs of small size, and 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 for example, there's this one. And it turned out that uh, John, I John would just have loved this. Uh, uh, that I believe that there are only these thirteen ways to uh, uh, to get the uh, concave convex uh, uh, situation. Now, now I, 
uh, with Tom Rokiki's help, I, I, I put up a website so you can play around with these things. And, uh, and, and, and so let's go to that. Uh, uh, let, let's go to that now. Let's see if I can, if I can get to uh, see. Okay, here we go. So, so you have this, uh, uh, you, you, you can look at the, um, <clears throat> uh, the graph realizations and, and, and you, can, you can choose a graph and then you can, then you can play around with it and you know, see what they are. So, so that's the, uh, uh, that's the whole thing. And I have some other examples here where you can, you, you, you can play, play around with other examples. Thanks a lot for, for, for the time. Excuse me. There was just too much to say about this, this great guy. <clears throat> thank you, Don. There absolutely is way too much to say. And thank you for sharing so much. We all appreciate it and wish that um, we could just sit here all afternoon and listen <laughs> to more. I, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again, Don. Yeah.